is a very interesting and rewarding game. It also shows how to play destroyers these days uh, with a lot of radar there. And um, we're going to get a chance to see exactly how that works. Um, we had a Des Moines and two Clevelands against us. Uh, they have a gearing and a shimmy. We have two gearings. Um, so we're going to get a chance to see exactly how I play it. And if you keep an eye sort of on the mini-map and, and play with the other gearing, he plays very well too. Right now he's heading towards A and letting everybody know that he's going to wait until he sees radar. I basically am saying the same thing to my side, that I'm scouting and waiting for the fish to come in. And I'm actually going to cut south and stay out of radar range and see if I can spot what fleet movements they have. The battleships are going to show up um, beyond the radar range and I'm assuming that we're going to have at least one radar ship um, if you look just right up where my target indicator is um, the space between those two rocks there that's going to be one spot I'm going to be looking for and where those two large uh, mountain pieces are up there on the other far side of it I'm going to assume that both are going to be friendly for radar. Now my captain's build has RDF on it, and on my stealth destroyers I tend to use that. Um, I don't on my gunboats. And I'm watching where that goes. That's telling me, of course, where the nearest ship is, and I'm waiting for my fish to come in about another 15 seconds. And I'm going to go ahead and set a pattern up there to interdict and try to keep them at bay. And this is one of the tricks with radar, too. If you can keep the radar ships not wanting to close in, you're going to have less risk from the radar. A, they might be too far away and waste it. And B, they may also have a situation where um, they go ahead and start firing it, looking for you, and um, they miss. So I'm about to send fish out. I'm looking to see if anything changes. And I'm going to send two patterns out, one where it indicates. And I'm also going to go into that space almost nose on because I'm assuming that there are going to be people coming down that cut. Enemy force detected. There's my first set of fish, and there's also my, um, now we've got now three we spotted, and as you can see, I wasn't too far off. The Cleveland is just about in his radar range. The Des Moines is at 11. If that were a Russian boat, he could be radaring me right now. And they've got a destroyer up there, probably. It might be somebody else uh, that also has RDF. You can see from the located. So that's probably who that's pointing at. Let's take a look and see how those fish are looking up there. Yep, here come his fish. Um, so I need to move out of the way. That was close, but uh, fortunately, I didn't eat one of those cigars. And I'm going to just sit here for a few minutes, maybe back up a little bit, and um, just watch what develops. I don't want to completely stop. You don't want to be still, but... I'm assuming that Cleveland <coughs> is not that far off range and the Des Moines is hopefully staying a little further back. And I've got 13.2 click fish, about 24 seconds to go on it. There's the Des Moines, he's still out of radar range. I'm a little concerned that um, I might have a Cleveland up there close enough, but I'm going to see if I can't uh, anticipate their moves a little bit and put some fish where they can do some damage. This is risky, uh, and I'm not that far from the edge, but I am capping. There's one set. I'm debating holding a second, but and there's the Cleveland, and I am in his radar range. Now, I made a little bit of a mistake here, and I wasn't paying close enough attention because I was watching it, and I got, as you can see, too close to those rocks. So I'm going to end up 
getting stuck here. And I'm also in range not only of the uh, Cleveland's radar, but the Des Moines. And I just got to hope that he doesn't have a module. Uh, my Des Moines has that module, and it can lay radar for 53 seconds. And in this environment, if I'm out here for 53 seconds just with his, not counting the other 20-odd plus that the other boat might have, I could be in trouble. And I've got fish in the neighborhood. Are any of my fish going to do good up here? And... Well, now I'm radar. And I am spotted. There's their gearing. And I'm working on getting out of here. And as you can see, I'm not quite going to have room. <clears throat> I've got a fire. You might have said, well, why did I put my smoke up? <clears throat> they can tell where I am, but I'm trying to mask a little bit of my movement, even though they can see me, as to what my intentions are. It's a little harder when you can't see um, that well. And I'm going to try to throw fire on this Azumo. I'm getting beat up pretty bad. Um, radar is radar. <laughs> defense points that Des Moines is closing in but fortunately their radar has run out and guess what I have fish so now this is the counterpoint to the radar if they close um, they're putting themselves at risk when my torpedoes come in and I'm going to take advantage of it I'm using my smoke which I laid in sort of that's another reason I laid it um, they closed in enough that I would be having a hard time getting away but they're also all over here, and they're now in my neighborhood. So I'm going to go ahead and anticipate where they might be and see what I can do to discomfort them. This is also going to slow them up a bit. And I would love to take out the Des Moines. Ah, there we go. We got a hit on the Azumo. Are we flooding? Yes, we are flooding. And there's another set, and I'm going to turn out of here. They may assume that I'm going to go around that island and try to get them, but I've got both sets of fish running, and I am going back towards our cap, staying out of their radar range, because I've got an assumption that uh, any time now, radar is going to light up again, and let's see how those fish are looking. On replays it's somehow hard getting these things to line up so I apologize for that difficulty. And those fish, eh, it's hard to say if they're going to do any good but uh, it is keeping them moving around a bit. Um, maybe, I just might nip somebody in the nose. The Azumo's coming here. I won't have smoke in time and I really wouldn't want to sit and smoke and uh, light up. To be honest, my play style now with all the radar out there is to never sit in smoke unless I know there's no threat from that. Same thing is true when you've got air um, or somebody else that can throw torpedoes, not just carriers, but something like a minotaur or a shimmy out there that can throw long fish. But I have fish again, and I'm going to see what I can do with this uh, Azuma. Now, if you look at the score, we now both have two caps. We have a little bit of an advantage. We've killed a cruiser. They, we've killed two cruisers and a battleship. They've killed one battleship, one cruiser. So this game is still awfully close. And if you look at my health point, it's not that great. Now, needless to say, you their Des Moines and that Azumo don't look that good either and looks like they're gearing through some fish or through some smoke out and the Azumo's coming in here so I am going to go ahead and I've got some fish going in that actually look like they're going to be pretty good Let's see if I can get on them ag I don't know why it does this on replays um, I apologize for that um, I'm hoping to also put a fish in the gearing. And we are capping B. Our team is doing real well. The other gearing has um, been busy. And he's now capping B, so they're not getting any points. Cleveland's leaving, and, well, we've just lost a Cleveland. Let's see how the gearing's doing on the... He's already gotten two kills. 
Um, those fish are, yep, 16,000, another 9,300. Um, he's in trouble. <laughs> and that's good news. I have smoke. I may just stop and actually take advantage of this because if there's nobody in that cap, they can't radar me. Now, they could have a gearing that's already in here. In fact, if you look at my RDF, it's showing that um, it's on the back edge of the cap, so I would not be surprised. But um, he's probably going to cut in here. That Cleveland is coming in, and it looks like the gearing may be moving up if that is him on the RDF. So I'm going to go ahead and launch these fish and saturate the neighborhood a bit. It's 26 seconds till the next one. I'm going to start moving up a little bit. Um, I'm a little concerned that that gearing may be coming in. I'm pretty low health, but um, right now we are not that far ahead, but we're getting C, um, and they're weak, and there is a good chance that uh, those fish may just do some real damage. Here comes this next set. And yeah, it looks like we, well, it's hard to say. They've got C, and <laughs> they are now down the Cleveland. So that's good news. Um, and, um, I'm going to throw some fire out here. Let's see if we can't uh, actually get that Azumo on fire, and maybe he'll also be nice and even. Yep, and there's another fish back on the, probably the Montana. Is he going to eat another one? We're close. Let's just keep laying fire on him. If we can set him on fire, he'll probably die from the fire. We're already up to uh, 104,000 damage. Um, Adding up pretty good. Um, there's another fish. One of the advantages we're starting to see for destroyers is if they've got radar, they're starting to feel better about closing in. It looks like the other gearing's got some fish going out. Is he going to get that one? Yeah, it looks like he took. Yep, he took that one. Um, nope, and there is that gearing. He's close. Uh, I'm very close to being in his detection range. I've got fish again. He just took out my steering up, oh, and I just got a witherer. And I've got fish out. I'm hoping that um, he's going to walk into those. And I want to stay alive for the next at least 10 seconds. I can get more fish out on that Montana. I took out his steering, and with those fish there, even if he's got uh, last stand, he may not be able to avoid those. I'm back in cover. Um, he just took a fish. And there we go. He's dead. Finished him off with a gunshot. And let's see if we can't just... Finish off that Montana. Nope, somebody's going to gun him down first if I don't get him. And we now have a comfortable lead, both in ships and points. We have two caps, and it looks like our Zhao is starting to uh, take D. We've managed to get a Witherer. Always a nice award. Uh, after the game, I will go ahead and show you the results from this game and also give you the captain's build and the ship build. But you can see, even with radar, um, the destroyers did an awful lot of pulling this game together. Um, that gearing's got at least three kills right now. I've got two. I've got 186,000 in damage. Um, was it risky? Yeah, I've got 900,000 in uh, potential damage on me. There was almost 42,000 in damage on my spotting. So needless to say, I did a fair job on this game. Um, I don't know if I'm going to come in on top on the team, but uh, I would say that both the other gearing and I have uh, earned our uh, place on the team today. 
getting a little bit of a cap point here. And uh, Minimap is showing that uh, their destroyer is trying to get up into B and uh, recover that cap. Cleveland is now dead, and look what we just saw. Whoops, if I can get him lined up on here. Boy, it really wants to move. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can close in. Here comes the Conqueror. Um, I was busy typing something to the other gearing and uh, ran into him. That wasn't exactly swift, but by the same token. Uh, those fish aren't going to get there, and I've got too many other ships in the way that might duck up. We don't need to add a team kill in here. Where this game's going real well. I'm just going to go ahead and start trying to gun this guy down. Uh, I've got smoke, so... Given the fact that there's only two battleships and only one in sight and their destroyers far away, I feel pretty safe sitting in smoke. There's other people to spot for me. That's another issue. Um, if you've got uh, smoke up in a situation like this, you could go ahead and um, keep your team from spotting. This guy could survive for a while and maybe even get some shots off where he can see. So, um, laying fire on him. I think I'm going to get another wither out of it. <laughs> I doubt I'm going to do uh, 120,000 in, uh, in fire and flood up. And there's a high caliber. <coughs> so, it's a nice addition to the game. Uh, so, in spite of having uh, all those radar boats and getting caught by radar, um, planning and admittedly a little bit of luck has led to a very good game <coughs> for both of the destroyers on our team. And it's also showing you uh, it isn't just a matter of kills, it's caps. Uh, this game for a while could have gone either way, and there it is. Thanks for watching. A bit of icing on the cake before I give the results. I opened up the container that I got because this game closed out today's mission for the Indianapolis. Opened up my container because I finished out that and I got a kid quest. So 5,000 base XP and I will get another ship. Along with it I got three Hydras, three Stars and Stripes, and a duplicate. But I'm certainly not complaining about that. Um, I'm going to go on now to the results for this game. Uh, really fun game. So here are our results. We did 197,000 plus damage. Most of that was done with the seven torpedoes. We did have 135 gun hits. And as you saw towards the end of the game, that gave us the high caliber. We had two kills, three incapacitations, two fires, six floods. And um, that's a lot of what led to the Witherers. Three defenses, a, an assisted cap. We did five spottings. And um, both the Wither and the High Caliber gave us first place. And the other Gearing, who also played against Radar very well, uh, came in second. He had four kills, so he just missed the Kraken. Um, and he got some of his off of uh, capping, so we had a good day of it in spite of the uh, radar on the other side. Detail report shows that uh, I had 900,000 potential damage, 41,009 of potential damage on my spotting. Two fires were caused on my spotting. I only did 13 of 180 capture points, did 21 of 118 defense points. I sunk the gearing, um, and that in part was, again, due to a torpedo here rolling 1,000 um, to floods, 8,700 to torpedoes, another 6,000 to gunfire. So a little bit of everything to kill him. He was weaving pretty good. Cleveland went down pretty easy to a torpedo when he didn't zig when he should have zagged. The Azumo um, fires and floods. So this was one where it was a combination. I actually, looking at this, thought I had more from floods. But on this case, 24,000 in fire damage, almost 16,000 in flooding. 
That was off of three torpedoes and 52 gun hits. The Montana, 79,000. Again, most of that was in flooding. In fact, that was close to a witherer all by itself, 55,000 in uh, flood damage. Conqueror, uh, 11,007, and that was all straight due to gunfire. I did get some incapacitations. And the Des Moines, a single main, or two main battery hits took him. So there was a 96,005 in fires and flooding. Most of that was flooding, 73,000. And with my main battery, I snarked in another 23,000. Credits, it was a good payoff. Uh, 450,000 in silver. Uh, part of that was due to I used the premium camo. And uh, I took home 368000 after deducting for premium consumables. And uh, in XP, $834,000 in uh, XP, partially again due to Type 20, and it was my daily win bonus. I did have uh, a flag out um, because I'm working hard on getting the... Con um, the premium uh, tier 9 Russian destroyer or cruiser. So 1780.68 in uh, free XP. I'll go ahead and attach my uh, gearing build after this. I hope you enjoyed the game. I sure enjoyed being in it. And uh, you can subscribe and I'll welcome any comments and we'll see you out there. As promised, here's the gearing build and captain skills. I always use premium consumables. Now, it helps that I have the premium camouflage on that uh, reduces the cost and uh, increases the return. Um, but you really want the extra heal, the extra smoke, and the extra speed boost. For upgrades, in one, I have main armaments mod one. You don't want to run the risk of having your guns or your torpedo tubes go down on this boat. Um, now, normally I would probably take either damage control or propulsion, but I have access to the engine speed boost modification one. This is the uh, premium one that you have to get in a mission or something like that, or in a super container, and it increases the action time of my speed boost by 50%, and that's a real valuable addition. If you can get one, use it. Uh, main battery, I didn't, there's no point in going with that. These guns already turned super fast. So I went with aiming systems. Uh, that uh, helps me hit faster and increases my torpedo traverse. The smoke generator reduces the dispersion time, um, but increases the action time. But on a U.S. boat, you already have real good smoke. I have the uh, steering gears modification here. Uh, making this thing as flexible as I can. Another viable option would be propulsion if you tend to sit in smoke. I don't tend to sit in smoke. I don't really use this as a gunboat. I did a bit in this game, but usually I'm out there spotting and seeing what I can do with torpedoes. Uh, concealment module is the only one that makes sense here. You want to keep as stealthy as you can. Um, Shima right now is a little stealthier. They're talking about allowing uh, the gearing to be buffed uh, more stealthy, but you want all the hiding you can get. Uh, in the final one, um, again, torpedo tubes. This reduces the reload time by 50%. Um, it does make a little more chance of becoming uh, incapacitated. That's not good, but um, I deal with that by uh, being a little more careful. And um, you can play with captain skills, but with it. let's look at those right now. Come on, captain skills, come on up. There we go. Priority uh, preventive maintenance, and that does help keeping those torpedo tubes from going down. Like I just mentioned, another viable one might be priority target, but uh, I try to stay hidden on this boat, and if I do get spotted, uh, I leave. If I were playing as a gunboat destroyer, I would seriously consider that as an option. The uh, last stand is just a mandatory one on virtually all destroyers. If you lose your engine or steering gears, you're going to be dead real fast. Uh, my next one is Superintendent. 
and getting those extra smokes and those extra speed boosts are real important um, and then concealment that would be my uh, first one for tier for my four pointer um, after that I have speeded up my torpedo so I have uh, very nice fast uh, torpedoes that go 13 and a half clicks uh, I'll show you the ship parameter on that um, so I have 71 knot torpedoes instead of 68 and uh, they're nerfed a little bit as far as distance but 13 clicks is quite far enough for most purposes and survivability expert increasing the ship XP that's 3500 more so uh, that's not chump change uh, that's like 15 percent boost in health and my final is radio location knowing where the nearest enemy is helps me not bump upon them especially when it's something like a shimmy out there who's pretty stealthy so that's my captain build again thanks for watching uh, i hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you out there